Hello guys! So ngayon, ang pag-uusapan natin ay tungkol sa moment area method. Okay, so yung moment area method is isa sa mga geometric methods of determining deflections. No? So kung naalala nyo, meron tayong na-mention sa mga unang video na apat na mga geometric methods, yung double integration method, yung area moment at saka yung conjugate at saka yung three moment equation method. Tapos meron din tinatawag ng work energy methods, ito yung Castellano at saka yung virtual work method. So, ang pag-uusapan natin today is about nga sa area moment method. So, ano ba yung area moment method or moment area method? Pareho lang yan, guys. Okay. So, uh, a moment, the moment area method is a useful and simple method of determining slopes and deflections in beams which involves the area of the moment diagram and also the moment of that area. So, ibig sabihin, guys, no, sabi ko nga, no, sa nakaraan na video, sa last, no, na, nung pinag-usapan natin yung moment diagram by parts, no, kailangan yun para sa pag-solve using the moment area method. So, kung sakaling hindi nyo pa napapanood yung moment diagram by parts, no, I think dapat mas panoorin nyo muna siya, no, para mas maintindihan nyo yung moment area method. Okay. So, the method is based on two theorems, which are called the moment area theorems, which are, relates the geometry of the elastic curve of a beam to its M over EI diagram. So, ang gagawin natin dito, guys, maya-maya, is hindi lang talaga siya moment diagram. Uh, gagamit tayo ng moment diagram by parts, no? Pero, hindi lang moment diagram yung gagawin natin, kundi M over EI diagram. I-divide natin yung moment diagram ng EI, no? Para makagawa tayo ng M over EI diagram. Madali lang yan, guys. Okay. So, take note lang, guys, that although yung moment area method is applicable to determinate beams and sometimes pwede rin siya sa indeterminate, no? uh, yung moment area method is actually best best applied sa mga cantilever at saka sa symmetrically loaded or symmetrically, and symmetrically supported ng mga beams, no? So, kapag ganito kasi yung problem, guys, ng deliver tsaka symmetrically loaded ng mga beams, no, usually, madali lang i-apply nga yung moment area method. So, ayun. So, ayun. So, pag-usapan natin yung dalawang moment area theorems. Okay. So, merong dalawang moment area theorems. Yung first is tinatawag natin change in slope. And yung pangalawa is tinatawag natin vertical deviation. Okay. So, mamaya explain natin kung ano yung dalawang yan, no? Pero uh, gusto kong i-remind lang kayo in advance no, that in applying this moment area theorems, it is important to realize that these theorems in general do not directly provide the slope and deflection at a point in the beam. Instead, they provide the slope and deflection of a, rel of a point relative to the tangent to the elastic curve at another point. So, bali no, ang ibig lang sabihin na ito, guys, na hindi mo ma-apply directly yung change in slope at saka vertical deviation ng mga theorems sa pag-compute ng slope at saka deflection agad-agad. So, so, kailangan mong i-relate siya sa geometry ng elastic curve. Anyway, so mamaya, no, sa example, ay maiintindihan nyo yung ibig kong sabihin about dito sa um, moment sa mga theorems na ito. Okay, so una natin pag-usapan guys is yung first na theorem which is yung tinatawag nga na change in slope. Okay, so ano ba yung sinasabi ng theorem na to? Ang sabi sa theorem, sa first theorem, the change in slope between any two points on the elastic curve equals the product of 1 over EI multiplied by the area of the moment diagram between these two points. Okay, so for example guys, meron tayong beam. So this beam is simply supported, tapos sabihin natin, uh, mayroong load na nag-act nga doon sa ating beam. So ngayon, no, sabihin natin meron tayong points sa beam. Sabihin natin si point A at saka si point B. So si point A is located here, yung color yellow. Tapos si point B is located here, yung kulay green. Okay, so ngayon guys, no, after nga mag-act mag yung ating load, magdi-deflect siya. So idodrawing natin ngayon yung kanyang elastic curve, that is yung deflection curve. At eto na nga yun, okay. So of course, Si point A at saka si point B ay lilipat ngayon sa may baba. So, nandito na sila sa may elastic curve. No? After nga mag-deflect nga ng beam. So, ngayon, kung nag-drawing tayo ng tangent line sa point A, kung nag-drawing tayo ng tangent line sa point A, ito yung tangent line na kung mag-drawing natin. And yung tangent line naman sa point B is ito. So, kinulayan ko guys ng yellow at saka green para alam natin kung anong tangent line yun. So, this is the tangent line sa point A and this is the tangent line sa point B. Ngayon, guys, no? So, 
Dito, meron tayong tinatawag na, na change in slope. So, yung angle. Okay. So, yung theta yung tinutukoy natin dito. Okay. So, take note na yung pag-measure ng angle natin dito is from left tangent to right tangent. So, asan ba dito yung left at saka asan ba dito yung right tangent? So, titingnan lang natin siya. Okay. So, sa case natin, yung point A is nasa left. Nasa left natin yung point A. And yung point B is nasa right. Nasa right ko, guys. no So, baka kasi pag nanonood kayo ng video natin, yung left ko ay... Um, different sa left nyo. Okay, so anyway, so yung left ko nga is yung point A, tapos yung right ko is yung point B. So ang pag-measure ng angle is galing sa left tangent papuntang right tangent. So ang tawag natin dito is theta BA. Okay, so anong ibig sabihin yan? That is the angle of tangent B with respect to the tangent A. No, kailangan guys yung ano ha, baka sabihin nyo kasi, ah, so uh, pag... Bakit may direction direction pa? No, actually no may 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 gamit yung direction na yan sa sign convention. So kailangan alam niyo yung sign convention no kasi baka, baka magtaka ah bakit negative yung lumabas na result? Bakit positive, ba? At least alam mo yung uh, ibig sabihin ng mga signs na ganun. Okay, so yun na nga guys no. So ang ibig sabihin ng theta BA is the angle of tangent B with respect to tangent A. So paano nga ba i-compute yung angle na yan? So yung angle of tangent B with respect to tangent A, okay, that is uh, computed by the following formula, that is 1 over EI multiplied by the area of the moment diagram from point B to point A. So, yung area ng moment diagram between these two points. Yun lang yung kailangan natin sa pag-compute. Okay. Okay, so pag-usapan natin guys yung rule of sign or yung sign convention nga ng first theorem. Okay, so kailan ba maaaring maging positive and kailan magiging negative yung ating theta. Okay, so for example, ganito guys yung ating case. No, korang katulad kanina, yung ating deflected curve ay ito. Ito yung ating yung red, yung elastic curve. Tapos point A natin ay ito, point B natin ay ito, and then tangent A, tangent B. So again guys, no? so remind ko lang, again yung pag-measure ng angle is galing sa left tangent papuntang right tangent. So yung left tangent natin dito is yung tangent A kasi nasa left natin si point A. And si tangent B natin is yung right tangent. So again yung pag-measure, yung ating angle dito, theta BA is the from left tangent to right tangent. So ang ibig sabihin na to, guys, pag ganito yung ating pag-measure ng angle, that is counterclockwise. So, that is a positive change in slope. So, ang lalabas na value dito, guys, is positive. Okay? And take note, bakit siya positive? Kasi nga, counterclockwise yung pag-measure ng angle from the left tangent. So, ibig sabihin, guys, kailan magiging negative na yung change in slope? Magiging negative siya kung ganito yung itsura ng ating elastic curve. For example, ganito yung ating elastic curve. Nag-concave downward siya. Tapos, ito nga yung ating point A, ito yung ating point B. So, yung tangents nila ay ito. Okay? So, sa case na to, si tangent A pa din yung ating left tangent, then tangent B pa din yung ating right tangent. So, again, yung pag-measure natin ng angle is from the left tangent to right tangent. So, ito yung ating angle, that is uh, theta BA, or that is the angle of tangent B with respect to tangent A. Okay? So, sa case na to, this is clockwise. So, this is a negative change in slope. Yun. So, bakit siya tinatawag na negative change in slope? It's because nga, if the, the angle, the theta VA is clockwise from the left tangent. Okay, so dito tayo ngayon guys sa second na theorem which is called the vertical deviation. So, ano yung sinasabi ng theorem na to? Okay, so according to this theorem, the vertical deviation of the tangent at point A on the elastic curve with respect to the tangent extended from another point B equals the product of 1 over EI multiplied by the moment of area of that part of the moment diagram between points A and B. Okay. So again, kayo medyo magulo kasi kapag ka naka-statement naka yung ating binabasa o naka-sentence, no? Medyo magulo yung uh, pagkakaitid. Okay. So pero anyway, explain natin ang ibig sabihin itong vertical deviation. For example, guys, meron tayong beam again. So, of course, this is a simply supported beam. Kitita natin. Tapos sabihin ulit natin na meron nga tayong loob nga nag nga in-apply dito nga sa beam na ito. And meron tayong two points. Sabihin natin meron tayong two points. Points A at saka point B. Okay? So, point A is yung yellow and point B is yung green. So, ngayon, no, after nga mag-deflect nitong beam, ay uh, yung shape niya ay magiging yung deflected curve or yung elastic curve. Kung nasa elastic limit pa siya. Sabihin natin, guys, 
that this is the elastic curve or the deflection curve of the beam. So after mag-deflect, ito na kayong itsura. So also, of course, yung point A natin ay lilipat dito, at saka yung point B ay dito. Okay? So ngayon guys, no, pag, pag nag-drawing tayo ng tangent line sa A, ito yung itsura niya. So this is the tangent A, and sa B naman, ito yung tangent B. Okay, so na, so ano ba yung uh, purpose natin? Bakit natin drawing ito? Okay, so nakikita natin itong distance na ito, no? So mula dito sa pinag-deflectan nga ni point A, sa may deflected curve na ito, no? Mula dito, papunta dito sa may tangent na to, ang tawag natin is TAB. Okay, anong ibig sabihin ng TAB? That distance, guys, no? Ang tinutukoy niya is the vertical distance. Okay? So, of course, itong nasa taas, mula dito sa original point ni point A papunta dito, ito na yung uh, usually na kinukumpute natin. That is the deflection, di ba? Pero ito yung, uh, uh, yung, yung tinutukoy na vertical deviation natin dito is yung TAB, itong distance lang na ito. Okay, so anong ibig sabihin yan? That is the vertical deviation of point A with respect to the tangent B. Tapos, dito naman sa kabila, itong distance na to, so ang tawag natin dyan is TBA, okay? So that is called the vertical deviation of B with respect to the tangent A. So again na guys, no? so yung tinutukoy sa unang subscript is yung point, okay? Tapos sa second subscript is yung tangent, okay? So, point B, tangent A. Okay. So, paano siya ngayon ikinocompute? No? Take note, guys. No? Again, sabi natin kanina na yung dalawang theorems nga is hindi naman directly nga kamihingin ng mga kaso sa labas. So, yun nga. So, sabi natin kanina yung dalawang theorems na to is hindi directly makakakompute nga ng deflection at saka ng slope. Pero pwede natin i-relate yun sa totoong deflection at saka sa totoong slope. So, ayun. So, Yun. So, i-compute natin yung TAB at saka TBA. So, pag-compute ng TAB, ito yung formula, guys. That is 1 over EI multiplied by the area of the moment diagram from AB. Okay? Kasi nga, TAB ito. So, AB yung nandito. Multiplied by bar XA. So, the, yung XA dito, guys, is the cent distance ng centroid ng moment diagram from point A. Okay? So, para naman sa TBA, that is 1 over EI multiplied by the area of the moment diagram from BA, from point B to A. So, pareho lang ito guys, no? Yung area of the moment diagram from AB is pareho lang yun sa area ng moment diagram sa BA. And then, multiplied guys ng XB. So, yung XB is the distance ng centroid ng moment diagram papunta sa point B. So, para hindi kayo maguluhan, guys, no? So, again, yung area ng moment diagram is kung, kung yung area between the two points na na-mention dito sa dalawang subscript. Tapos, yung X dito, yung subscript na syempre is yung nauna. A yung nauna na subscript. So, X sub B kasi B yung nauna, X sub A kasi A yung nauna. Okay? So, madali lang naman. So, i-memorize nyo na siya, guys. No? Madali lang naman siya i-memorize. So, ngayon naman ay pag-usapan natin, guys, yung rule of sign or yung sign convention nga ng second theorem, that is the vertical deviation. Okay. So, kailan ba siya magiging positive and kailan siya magiging negative? So, sa case na to guys, yung ating deflected curve is concave upward. Ito yung ating tangent A. So, ibig sabihin, guys, ito is called the TBA or the vertical deviation of point B with respect to the tangent A. So, again, no? yung ating first subscript dito is yung point and yung second subscript is yung tangent. Okay, so uh, ito ay sinatawag natin siyang positive deviation. So positive ang lalabas nito. No, bakit? Kasi yung point B is located above the reference tangent. So ito yung ating tangent and yung point B is nandito sa taas. So kaya siya positive deviation. Okay, so kailan naman siya magiging negative? Kailan naman magiging negative yung, uh, ver yung vertical deviation natin? So mangyayari yan kapag ka ganito yung itsura ng ating, for example, ganito yung itsura ng ating elastic curve. So, this is the point A, this is the point B. Tapos sabihin natin, ito yung ating tangent A, of course, that is the tangent A. So, ito is the TBA, the vertical deviation of point B with respect to the tangent A. So, sa case na to, yung point B now is below the tangent A. So, this is a negative deviation. Kasi nga, yung B is located above the reference tangent. So again guys no so again so iyan ko lang ibabalik ko lang yung kayo ng sinabi ko so yung mga yung theorem 1 at saka theorem 2 yung pagcompute ng theta ba or bab or saka yung tba or tab no 
ang ang mga ito ng mga theorems ay hindi kaagad makukumpute yung deflection at yung slope. So kailangan pa natin silang i-relate nga no sa totoong deflection at saka sa totoong slope. So para mas maintindihan natin na yung paggamit ng moment area method is um uh, mag-example problem tayo. So ayun, so ikakat mo muna guys yung ano, isasolve natin to sa next na video. Ikat muna natin nga itong video para mas madali natin, mas madali niyo siyang ma uh, ma review no yung mga basic concepts at saka yung uh, example problems. So ayun, so ikat natin hanggang dito lang muna yung video and then sa next video tayo makita-kita. Okay? So see you sa next video guys.